Hi there, I've had a few questions about what a Bonferroni adjustment is and when to apply it. So a Bonferroni adjustment is a really important part of calculating statistics. So let's go through and just take a step back about what significance is with that and then why do we need to have this kind of correction adjustment factor. So when you have a significant outcome, you've run some kind of stats test like a t-test and you got a, a p-value which is let's say 0.04. Now you're looking for what's called the alpha which is 0.05. If your p-value is smaller or equal to 0.05, you say that it is significant and you are good to go. If your p-value is larger than the um, alpha, 0.05, then not significant. And what does that mean? Well, once again, it means that if you have a significant outcome, we believe there is a difference between the groups. If we have a non-significant outcome, then the groups are overlapping, or at least we cannot prove that they're different groups. Significance doesn't tell you anything about the size of the difference between groups, it's just if a difference exists. Now, with 0.05, that means that we are 95% certain that there is difference between groups. If we um, had a p-value come out of 0.1, then we're 90% certain there is a difference between the groups. And stats have just got together and, and gone, you know what, we're going to put the benchmark. We recognize 95% as that really good confidence level that, no, there's a difference between the groups. So that means there's a 5% chance we're wrong. And that is an error. Now, there are two kinds of errors you can have. There's type 1 error, where you'll say, that there is no difference between, between the groups, but in reality, if you had a better sample, then there would be a difference. So it's a sampling problem. Then you have a thing where type two error, where you get a significant result, but in reality, out there in the world, there wouldn't be a difference. So it's a false positive. These happen all the time. Now you'll see false positives happen all the time. Someone might get a COVID test, come back as you got COVID, and it turns out they don't, it's got a cold. It's a false positive. Now, we do one t-test, and we're going to do a t-test on. We've got a load of sweets, and we get a strawberry-flavored sweet. Give it to the person. Their strawberry-flavored sweet. Now, before I gave it to them, I gave them an IQ test, and I measured their IQ. Gave them the strawberry-flavored sweet. Measured their IQ afterwards, and insignificant outcome. There's no significant difference because why would having a little sweet make you more intelligent. It wouldn't. It's crazy. Now, let's get the whole bag of sweets out. And we've got every single flavor from Parmesan cheese to, um, you know, strawberry and red wine. And we just keep doing tea tests. So we have the before um, the sweet, and then here's a banana flavored sweet. We run a tea test. No difference. Um, we go, okay, here's a pineapple flavored sweet. And we just keep going around. And eventually we get to that Parmesan flavored sweet at the end. I don't know why I'd want a parmesan flavored sweet, but we're going with that. And we give them parmesan flavored sweet. And we're measuring the before test, um, before sweet IQ with the after sweet IQ, standard T test. And we get a significant outcome. What does that mean? Does that mean that eating parmesan flavored sweets makes you more intelligent? No. Why, why would it? It's crazy. What you got here is all of these errors are adding up together to increase the chance of an error happening. Now, after about running 16 tests, you'll have about a 52% chance of having one of these type 2 errors. And if you carry on over 16, the probability increase, increase, increases, where it's almost certain that you're going to have a type 2 error somewhere in your mix. And that's just because the little 5% are they're multiplying each other up and probabilities increasing. We see this in films. So you've got an um, old-fashioned gun with a barrel. You put your bullet in and spin the barrel. If you were to put one bullet in there, spin it, you've got a 1 in 6 chance of having the bullet in the gun when you pull the trigger. Now, you might be able to 
spin it, pull, spin, pull, spin, pull, quite a few times. Eventually, you're going to get the bullet. It's going to land in that chamber. You're going to pull it. It will go off. Okay. It's the same principle with, um, with statistics. But rather than having a six chamber in the gun, you've got 100 chambers in the gun. And there's five bullets. So, yeah, 5% chance of a mistake. So what you need to do is you need to correct this to bring the probability of an error right back down to the original 5% chance of an error, 95% confidence. We do this with the Bonferroni correction. Alternatively, you can call it the Bonferroni adjustment. Both words work great. And it works in a really simple way. You take the original alpha, which is going to be 0.05 then you divide that by the number of tests that you are running. So we're going to run 16 tests. Now, I've got my little calculator here. So we have original 0.05. Oops, that's wrong. 0.05. There we are. And then divide that by our 16 tests. We get a new number, which is 0.003. So this is your new alpha with the Bonferroni um, adjustment. So any stats test you do out of those 16 that has a p-value equal to or lower than this value, you can say it's significance with 95% confidence for difference between groups. If you have a p-value higher than this, it could be 0.004, you must say it's insignificant. We run those 16 tests. And that's bond for any correction. So when do you apply it? Now, if you just do one t-test on its own, so I've got um, five websites that I'm testing. I've got the satisfaction scale of some kind, like SUS, and I'm doing one um, t-test. Right. Uh, you just use standard alpha because otherwise it's 0 0.05 divided by one, which is 0 0.05. The problem comes when you start doing more than one t-test or more than one man whitney or whatever test you're doing so i've got five websites so doing the original website versus the first redesign the original website versus second redesign original website versus the third redesign and the original website versus the fourth redesign so I've, in total i've got four different t-tests really simple so in this group i'm going to go for let's have a look 0.05 divided by four, and that equals 0 0.0125. So that's our new Bonferroni adjusted alpha. In all of those four t-tests that we're gonna run on our websites, that's the alpha you're looking for. You're looking for equal to that, because it's multiple comparisons. Now, what happens if we do this, and then go off and wait a few weeks, and then go and do this again, another four batches. Does that mean that we're doing a divide by eight for eight upon three adjustments? No, it's still four because you keep it in the group of comparisons that you're doing. So we're doing a group here of four. So you divide by four, no, four or five websites, no, four tests. And if you were doing um, a different thing later on, that's a different group so you'd look at how many tests you're comparing against in that moment so bomb for any corrections um, really are local and you can see that they are really powerful because if you don't do a bomb for any correction when doing multiple comparisons you can get a type 2 ever and start believing something as crazy as parmesan sweets can increase your intelligence